we are back on the Cover to Cover Bible Study Podcast. That's right. The Word of God, living and breathing forever. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glad to be back with you. Uh, due to life and schedule and uh, my wife getting sick and travel, we have, uh, it's been a few days. It's been some time since we've uh, continued here uh, through God's word. So, but we are back. That's right. Here we are. Loving the, loving the Lord with all of our heart. Absolutely. And good morning, Brad. Brad Hayes is uh, back on the study with us here on the chat board. Love seeing that. That's right. Okay, let me see. Let me open up. Perfect. Here we go. So open up your Jehovah. Bibles. Second Kings chapter 13. That's right. And we are reading out of the New Living Translation with our King James Handy and our Hebrew and Greek ready to rock. Of course. Uh, and if you're just tuning in for the first time, we're reading cover to cover. Started back in April, Genesis 1-1, and, and here we are. That's right. You know, it's actually going by pretty fast. Yeah, it's like you blink and it's just going down and down and down and it's almost like in chunks it's like whoa we're getting there i know it's pretty right pretty wild soon we'll be drinking water from our hands from the jordan <laughs> <laughs> that's right soon we'll be there gosh only 700 days to go Jehovah. yeah it's gonna be good well yeah. shall we Pray it in and, and get right to the word. Yes, let's do it. Perfect. Um, you want to pray it in? I'll pray it out. Absolutely. Lord, we love you. We come to you in the name of Jesus. You're so wonderful. And we just thank you for another day to share your love, to enjoy family and friends and open our eyes, Lord. Oh, I pray you just reveal to us revelation knowledge from your word. And uh, thank you for always leading us and guiding us everywhere we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Beautiful. All right, here we go. Jehovah Second Haas. Kings chapter 13. And uh, Oh, yeah. You want to take her down to like 12 and I'll slam dunk the rest? Sure, yeah, that sounds great to me. Jehoahaz. Okay, verse 1. 2 Kings 13, Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, began to rule over Israel in the 23rd year of King Joash's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria uh, 17 years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. Ah. Yep. He followed the example of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to, to commit. Now, a quick reminder, then that was uh, worshiping false idols, you know, like uh, golden calves and things such mm. like that, which is terrible. Good morning, well, Aaron Torres. And recap for chapter 12 is Joash was awesome. Yeah. You know, the young king at seven years old. Right. And was burning idols organizing the Levites again, bringing Israel kind of back on track, if you will. Exactly. Yeah, you know, and uh, so some people serve the Lord, some of these kings, and some don't. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Uh, three, so the Lord was very angry with Israel, and he allowed King Hazael of Aram and his son Ben-Hadad to defeat them repeatedly. Then Jehoahaz prayed for the Lord's help. Ah, there we go. And the Lord heard his prayer, for he could see 
how severely the king of Aram was oppressing Israel. So the Lord provided someone to rescue the Israelites from the tyranny of the Arameans. They, then Israel lived in safety again as they had in former days. So look at there. As soon as you, you go to the Lord, you pray, you, you ask God for help, and look, he shows up. Isn't that interesting? I love it. Yeah. I love it. You know, and you talk a lot, Brian, about running, running to God. Yeah. Um, Run to him. And here's a king who was doing evil in the Lord's sight. You know, sounds like didn't didn't really have a relationship with God. But something came over this king to, you know, drop mm -hmm. to his knees and, and pray to the Lord. You know, and that's why we, we can't. We got to be careful to judge people because you never know when they're going to turn to God. Right. We never know when they're going to turn to Jesus today and say, Lord, forgive me. I repent of my sins. I give my life to you. Great point. Great point. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, that's why um, all the people uh, of, the, of the history and, and it's hard to judge them because you're right. You know, remember Paul the Apostle was murdering Christians. You know, he was formerly Saul. Um, and you don't know who, you know, is going to, what evil person is going to change their life for the better. That's exactly right. Great point. Yeah, and look at the chat board here. Good morning, Torres. Like you said, Brian, and then James McDermott just jumped on. Mm -hmm. Morning, James. Of course, we have Brad here who joined us this morning. Great to see everybody back on the on the board here as we continue cover to cover. That's right. Verse 6. But they continue to sin following the evil example of Jeroboam. They also allowed the Asherah pole in Samaria to remain standing. Finally, uh, Je Jehoahaz, his army was reduced to 50 charioteers, 10 chariots, and 10,000 foot soldiers. The king of Aram had killed the others, trampling them like dust under his feet. The rest of the events in Jehoaz's reign, everything he did, and the extent of his power are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Jehoaz died, he was buried in Samaria. Then his son, Jehoash, became the next king. Verse 10, Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, began to rule over Israel in the 37th year of King Joash's reign in Judah. Remember, there's still a north and the south kingdom here. Mm. He reigned in Samaria 16 years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to turn from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had led Israel to, to commit. So I guess once you have these false gods, it's hard to just pull them away from the people, you know. Uh, 13 to 12, the rest of the events of Je Jehoash's reign and everything he did, including the extent of his power and his war with King Amaziah of Judah, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When jo Je Jehoash died, he was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Then his son, Jeroboam II, became the next king. Well, and you, you go all the way back, Brian, to when God was saying over and over and over and over again, do not make a human a king. Mm -hmm. You know, and, right. and I'm not saying all the kings have been bad. You know, we see King David, we even see, last chapter, King Joash, who is pretty rock solid, you know, uh, etc. But I'd say 90% of the kings have been a disaster, you know. Yeah. And it's like, if we would have just listened to the Lord and made him our king, you know. You, yeah, you nailed it. I mean, he, he warned over and over again, look. They're going to pull you away from me. They're going to enslave your kids. They're going to use your children, use your wives, you know. 
when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, or in this case, Yahweh, you know, that's the, that's the right answer. Right. You know, Amen. It's I, always the right answer. And I think that's really what the Lord is trying to get across here mm. or not trying is, you know, this, we're dealing with flesh. Right. That's you know? a great point. That's a great point. Yeah. We, if, you know, exactly right, John. Yeah. You know, don't serve yourself and your flesh, you know, serve the most high God, mm -hmm. you know, because then, you know, if you do, if you serve yourself, you serve your flesh, you're going to do what's evil in the Lord's sight because it's not faith in him. It's faith in yourself. It's mm -hmm. faith in these false idols. Now, even though we don't worship golden calves, do you worship weightlifting? Do you worship, you know, your TV Love program? Do you worship? You know, whatever alcohol. You know, do you, is all you think about. Wait, wait till I get home, or wait till I get to the bar, or wait till I get that pizza, or wait till I get that that girl, that new that new woman, or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Check yourself on that. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it, I got to check myself on that all the time. You know, you have to. Check yourself. Same. All right. Yeah, that phrase that says, thou shalt not have any other gods before me, that doesn't mean just some false god like Baal. Mm. Right? Yeah. Politics. <laughs> politics. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, exactly. Politics, Twitter, you know, gossip. What's your god? Just the world. Mm. You know, the world can really suck you into it. Just mess with you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like I was watching the I was watching American Idol the other night with my wife. You know, we're kind of into this season, and just like there's times where I'm watching American Idol, and I just looked over at my wife, and I was like, I'm so in the middle of Egypt right now. <laughs> like I'm so I'm so in the world right now. I just felt it. Yeah. Like I'm this is the definition of worldly. And I'm not saying that all American Idol is bad. You know. No, but there's some things like that, like, gosh. I need to go read the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you almost feel like just you almost feel dirty in a way. Right. You know? Yeah. It's like the new Buzz Light movie coming out. You know, I wanted to take my kids to go see it, but now I find out there's you know, dudes kissing each other, like romantically. Mm -hmm. That's not of God's way. That's right. not biblical. You know, my, my pastor said, uh, Pastor Brett said something really good on Sunday. He was talking about abortion and, you know, with everything going on right now. And he did one of those things where someone comes at him and he goes, well, geez, Pastor Brett, <laughs> talking politics on Sunday. And he goes, it's not politics, it's biblical. Right. I love that. They people they 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 connect homosexuality and um, abortion, right, and all these topical topics. They say it's politics. Right. No, it's biblical. What does God say? That's that's Precisely. the answer. Precisely. So, and what you're, and, and here's another thing. What a pastor, a, a, a preacher, teacher, they're not t evangelist. They're not allowed to talk about the things of our world. This whole idea that, that churches aren't allowed to talk about politics is ridiculous mm. or any other thing. Where does it say that anywhere? This whole idea of ch separation of church and state has gone out of control. Of course, a minister of God is allowed to say whatever he wants. Look what, right, and, and, and instruct, instruct the body of Christ to, to vote the way God votes. Now, you know, should you say, vote for George Bush? No, but you, you, no, but you talk about the principles and you vote what the Bible says. So there's nothing wrong with, but we've gotten out of control. The world is trying to force 
the church down, you know. Shut your mouth. Don't say anything or I'll take away your tax exemption, you know. That's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. I I remember there, because Pastor Brett does prophecy updates, I think now, like once every two weeks or so. something like that. Once a month, but, uh, and a lot of it's, you know, what's happening in the world, politics, current events that, of course, connect biblically, et cetera. And a lot of the comments, um, because, I mean, some of these videos that Brett puts out now, like, has over 100,000 views. Yeah, it's awesome. Prophecy updates, like, he's, he's really kind of blowing up which is really cool to see. But a lot of comments are like that, Brian, of you shouldn't be talking politics and you, you're you not allowed to be talking like this. And yeah. it's like, oh, show me that in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's not politics. It's biblical. You know, I don't want my kids going to see the new Buzz Lightyear movie because I don't want my two kids seeing two guys kiss. Yeah, exactly. So you don't, you could call me homophobic which, you know, I love everybody. Lo- you know, Jesus said, love your neighbor. Mm-hmm. I love everybody. I have a very warm heart. You know, mm-hmm. if, if if you're a gay man or a gay woman, I'll, I'll, I'll be nothing but love to you and give you a big hug and et cetera. But no, I'm not going to expose my four-year-old and my seven-year-old to it. Yeah. At his name movie. Thank you. Because it's biblical. Same thing with abortion. What's mm-hmm. your stance on abortion? W- w- why are you asking me? What do you mean, what's my stance on abortion? It's not about me. See, everyone wants to know Bingo. your stance. What's your opinion? My opinion's God's opinion. That's so good, John. My opinion is what the Bible says. God says, That's... I knew you before you were in the womb. Mm-hmm. That's right. Before I ever knew you, I had plans for you. Right. Like he's intimate about who you are, not just this lollygagging. Oh, I'm going to make this dude out of evolution and see what happens. Nope. He is so detailed. He knows your end from the beginning. And this Mm. whole idea that it's all separate, right? You can't talk about this and you can't talk about that. Look, God, God made it all. And he's instruct us in everything. So what does he say? Let's talk about it. There's nothing wrong with that. But the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10, 10. Jesus said that. Well, it's sad, too. I've I've actually been in debates about the abortion issue with... I I don't want to... I'll just say with Christians. Christian people. Yeah. I was going to do the... Double quotes. (laughs) I was feeling bad about it, but since you did it, I'll go with you. Yeah. And, you know, one of their big things, it's interesting, because I'll go right to the word, right? I'll just start naming, I'll start reading scripture on how a baby is made by God. A baby is a child of God, even before, yeah, even before the parents have sex. Exactly. You before you were in the womb. That is a huge statement. Like, let that sink in. Like, me and my wife have been trying for a third child now for about eight months. You know, let's say, God willing, by God's blessing, my wife gets pregnant in two months from now. Two months. Right? So we haven't even... Uh, had a date night for the for the birth of for the pregnancy of our third child, but right now, as I podcast with you, Brian and Stuart and James and Torres and Brad, God is up there, possibly making our third child. <laughs> oh, he he's already there. Think about it, like yeah. that. Whoa, whoa. So this this whole conversation of when is a child. Is it is it's the heartbeat? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's before the heartbeat. I knew you before you were in the womb. So I, I see a lot of Christians. Sorry, let Amen. me die. Amen. My, Come on, my bring point, it. My point of this is I got sidetracked. It's a lot of Christians go, well, listen to this podcast. Listen to this guy. Read this article. I I don't know what it is with 2022 Christians. 
but they are always trying to go have me read something besides the Bible. And I tell them the same thing every single time. I don't want to read that. I don't want to listen to that podcast. Amen. I don't want to go to that article. Uh, I have a book that was written by God that was personally given to me. That's right. In the Lord, would I go read something else? Let, I mean, you nailed it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, we're not saying don't listen to podcasts. I mean, we're having one right now. But he, his word is true. The answer's in there. When, you know, when it says X and you go with Y, you're wrong, not God. It's like, it's funny. People act like, oh, well, you know. By the way, God is always right. Not us. God is always right. Mm. And that's why people mer you know, mix up this whole idea about church and state and religion and politics. No, it's God is always right. Mm. Right? He has the answer. He knows how to rule. He knows how, how, how politics work. Don't let the enemy shut you up. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your family. Tell them what the Bible says. Tell them what Jesus says. Because that's the, the right way to live. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's well said. All right. And again, it goes all the way back to Genesis 1-1. Oh, yeah. Right? The first sentence of the Bible. It, what an amazing sentence God wrote. The very first sentence. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's it. Like, believe that. If you truly believe that, then every single word following is 110% accurate. So if you believe God's word and you believe the Bible, then it's not about your opinion. Mm -hmm. It's what does God say? It's not politics. It's what does the Bible say? Absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. Didn't no, fire. absolutely. So no, I'm not going to go see the Buzz Lightyear movie with my kids. So, yeah, me neither. I I I got rid of Disney Plus. I I unsubscribed, and I'm like, I I can't. I will not tolerate the, some of the things that are going on. Do I miss all the Marvel shows? Yeah, but sometimes you have to stand up for what's right. Look, we're looking at these. We're looking in here in Second Kings thirteen. Je, uh, Jehoash and, and, and all these people are following the ways of Jeroboam and, and worshiping false gods, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, when you, uh, when you, I know this sounds a little strict, but when I, you know, when you, um, when you're subscribing and you're giving your money to and you're supporting all these companies who are pro grooming our children and all these, these lives, these, these different ways. I'm not into supporting that. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You know, and that's how we choose. Every day we vote, John, with our money, with our decisions. You know, you're voting for what's right in the world. So sometimes you got to stand up mm. and do what's right in the in the ways of the Lord, in, in the eyes of God, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen to that. All right. Where are we at? 14. 14. So we just have a new king in the north, Jeroboam the second. Yeah, you want me to take it? Yeah, yeah. The, you, this is where you you were saying uh, yeah. you can either go all the way or or it goes as far as you want. Let's see here. Let's see how I'm reading this morning. All right. Ooh, Elijah's final prophecy. Uh oh. Wow, Elijah's back. Elijah's back. What's he gonna say? When Elijah was in his last illness, King Jehoash of Israel visited him and wept over him. My father, my father, see the chariots and chariot tears of Israel, he cried. Elijah told him, get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Elijah told him, put your hand on the bow. And Elijah said, I'm sorry. Elijah laid his own hands on the king's hands. Mm. Then he commanded, open that eastern window 
and he opened it. Then he said, shoot. So he shot an arrow. Elijah proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over a ram. For you will completely conquer the Am- the Arameans at Ephek. Yeah. Yeah, it's wow. good. It's good to see the uh, the king Jehoash. He's coming to the Lord through the prophet here, and which is good. That's great. It's again. It's great to see Elijah again coming in. You know, and especially at a dark time like this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, remember, there's a, you're you're not kidding about dark time. Remember, there's only a few soldiers. What does it say up here in verse seven? Fifty charioteers, ten chariots. And that ten thousand foot soldiers for all of the the, the southern kingdom. So, mm. yeah, you know, when you turn your back to the Lord, God will start taking away. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, the enemy comes in, you know, to steal, kill, and destroy. So it's like it's interesting to me. It's like, you know, we know Brian. We we know, um, of course, we know Christians, right? Um. And we know Jewish people too. And there is just a certain light of positivity and happiness that radiates off God fearing people, you know, people that love the Lord. And then you meet atheists, non believers. And it's like, there's so much sadness. Yeah, it's totally you different. Know what they say. I'm all right. I'm good. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep on going here. It's like come to the light, baby. I you know, know? Come, come walk with Jesus. Like, I, it's like it's like we're yelling at everybody. Like, this walk with Jesus, right, is so amazing. Life is so much better. Like, even though it's a narrow path, it's the best path. Truly. Like, come on over, come experience the joy and the happiness and being content and feeling Christ inside of you. Like, come join us. Stop living with sadness and anger and, and, and darkness. Hey man, there's no other way. Like you, you, you bring up an interesting topic. Like you, you know, you ever, you can just kind of tell sometimes when you meet a fellow Christian someone where the light of God is living on the inside of them. And mm. you can kind of tell when you just see someone who's just walking around in this like zombie, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, I don't, you know, it's just me out here in this lonely world that just evolved from nothing. <laughs> it's so sad. Uh, you bring up a great point. So sad. So Jesus is the answer. It's all, he always is. Mm. And he, you know, and here's another thing. He didn't ask you to clean yourself up before you walk, you know, you go to the Lord. He never says, well, be, be perfect before you come to me. No, no matter what you're doing, no matter how bad you lived last night and you woke up this morning, today is the day to answer, to answer the call and say, yes, Lord, I'm here. I choose you now, not my old life. Mm. And you know what, John? He will always accept you. The Bible says in the New Testament that for there is no reason at all that the Lord will reject someone who comes to him. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Someone who comes to him. Yeah. Free will. Free will. Will Hawkinson. Okay. Let's continue here. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. I think we are on 18. Then he said, now pick up the other arrow arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. Then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times mm. uh, strike them against now pick up the arrows and strike them against the ground so the king picked them up and struck the ground three times 
Okay. So what's your. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know why he stopped or, you know, maybe he was instructed to do more, but I guess he just struck the ground three times, you know, but I guess Elijah was expecting him to just like keep banging the ground. I don't know. That's an interesting, interesting take. You should have struck the ground. He says five or six times. Mm -hmm. And now you only have victory over, over them three times. Well, it sounds like every time he struck the arrow to the ground, there was a, vic a victory, of course. Yeah. Stopped at three, and he probably still had arrows in his bag. The, you know, Elijah was probably like, why'd you stop? Yeah. Well. Keep going. Don't be lukewarm. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Don't be lukewarm. Don't be half in. Let those arrows go, baby. Amen. Love that. Yeah. See how the Lord just, man, just, that's awesome. That is a good point. Another example of, of how to, how to keep, you know, be zealous for the Lord, you know, excited for him. Go all out. Slam bars for Jesus. Because <laughs> he doesn't say, look at this right here. Very interesting. He, Elijah doesn't say, six times he doesn't say five times he doesn't give a precise number look right here he says you should have struck the ground five or six times like basically saying you could have just kept going mm -hmm. kept shooting those arrows keep fighting don't give up don't stop at three right no right absolutely yeah that's definitely huh. a verse that is good to hear every so often yeah, he really wasn't aggressive enough, was he? Yeah, you got to get off the couch. You got to keep fighting. That's it. Like David, you got to walk over to that giant and say, ha, who is this uncircumcised <laughs> Philistine? I, I'll fight him. That, yeah, that curses God's army. I don't think so. I'll fight him. That's right. Yeah. Uh, verse 20, then Elijah died and was buried. Mm. See? God... You know, he buries his loved ones. Yes, he does. Groups of Moabite raiders used to invade the land each spring. Used to invade the land each spring. Once when some Israelites were burying a man, they spied a band of these raiders. So they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elijah and fled. But as soon as the body touched Elijah's bones, the dead man revived and jumped to his feet. Whoa. How about them apples? Holy smoke and biscuits. Yeah, the, this is that song, the, uh, the, the uh, rattle. Oh, you're right. Yeah, the bones of Elijah. Look at that. The anointing of God was so strong with him, right? That as soon as the body touched the bones, boom, he raised from the dead. I'm going to read that again. It's because I, I didn't read it. Groups of Moabite raiders used to invade the land each spring. Once when some Israelites were burying a man, they spied a band of these raiders, so they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elijah and fled. But as soon as the body touched Elijah's bones, the dead man, the dead man, revived and jumped yeah. to feet. You know, isn't it interesting? Like, it's so interesting how things work, right? Normally, the spirit of God on us isn't always. It's for it's for other people, right? It says that the spirit worketh. It, it, the gifts of the spirit and the anointing of God is for other people. So notice how the anointing was so strong on Elisha, yet he didn't, he wasn't healed or saved from being sick. Did you notice that? Yeah. So does it mean that he, he, um, he couldn't have saved him, right? But he didn't believe for it or whatever. I don't know. But if there was an anointing there. Look, it raised this man from the dead. It's very interesting. You know, it just shows you that God does. Sometimes God expects us to believe in certain areas. It's kind of like that whole example of the uh, the bank. 
you can't just go to the bank and, and expect money to just fall into your pockets. Mm. Right. There are, there are ways that thing that it's set up. You have to go over there. You have to go to the teller. You have to fill out a form, put your information down and then an exchange happens, right? You exchange mm. your ID and your signature and they give you money that's in there. Well, it, it, God's the same way. Like he, he, he has an exchange system, he, you know, but look here, Elijah's anointing was so strong. The body touched his bones and he was raised from the dead. But yet Elijah died being sick. Yeah. Interesting. And it's very interesting. I'm not, I don't say I, I don't have the answers. I'm just pointing it out, you know? Well, it, you know, obviously it wasn't this man's time to die yet, you know? I, I guess not. <laughs> and Elijah's up there in Abraham's bosom at this time. Yeah. Seeing everybody. Moses! Yeah, you know, he's like, I'm not going down there. Heck no. <laughs> King David! Oh, Elijah! Adam. What's up, buddy? Yeah, Elijah. Oh my nope. gosh. How are you guys doing? It's good to see you. I've read so much about you. I know. I know. How's, oh how's the family? God, did you hear Jesus is going to be coming in here soon and taking us to heaven? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, you know, it's it's no problem for Elijah. But yeah, this guy was just boom. You know, yeah, the so cool. God is amazing. Yeah. I know. Amazing. It's amazing. He is amazing. But yeah, if I'm, I was, I was talking to my, one of my um, friends and he was like, I was like, uh, I said something about, uh, if you ever you need me about something, you know, I'll come to the hospital or whatever. I can't remember how we were talking. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it. You, you don't need it. He's an older gentleman. He was like, you don't need it. Don't put me on life support. I'm fine with going to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> he's, you know, he's like, so if I go, if I if happen to be in the hospital, don't try to revive me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Let me go. Yeah. Let me go. I'm ready for heaven. I mean, not that I don't, I want to go there now, but. No, I mean, at that point, you're like, don't tie me down here. I know. Pretty much. You know, let me, let me shoot up, baby. It's, it's go time. Yeah. No kidding. It's, it's Lord willing. So, um, how about the apples? That's right. That's my grandma used to say that. How about the apples? Mm. All right. Verse, uh, you want to slam dunk it? Absolutely. 22. King, then, uh, King Hazael of Aram had oppressed Israel during the entire reign of King Jehoahaz. But the Lord was gracious and merciful to the people of Israel. And they were told they were not totally destroyed. He pitied them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. Man, look at that. He went all the he goes, he's still looking back to the covenant. It's always about covenant, John. And it is. That agreement, that blood, mm -hmm. that, that decision. And to the day, he still and to this day, he still has not completely destroyed them or banished them from his presence. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Highlight that line, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, he's not. I mean, he's going to always, um, you know, he's going to always come through, even though he might scatter them. He's yep. always going to uh, be their God and they'll be his people. King uh, Hazael of Aram died and his son, Ben-Hadad, became the next king. Then Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, recaptured from Ben-Hadad, uh, ben son of Hazael, the towns that had been taken from Joash's father. Je Jehoahaz. Jehoash defeated Ben-Hadad on three occasions. There it is. And he recovered the Israelite towns. So there are the three victory moments. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Hey, can I make one more point before we get out of here? I'd love you to make that point. I have a really interesting point here. It really warms my heart. Obviously, there's a lot we don't know about just life. You know, God is only giving us what he wants to give us in this in the book that he wrote to us. Mm -hmm. So with this said, this man that was being buried and they had to throw him in the tomb really quick because there was raiders. We don't know his story. Nope. Think about this. There is a there is a whole life story to this guy. 
that we don't know. We just see the very end and the God's power working here. Right. Yeah. I don't know. This guy must have had like an amazing relationship with God. And, you know, could have, yeah. How he died. And somehow this whole situation happened. And then God's like, all right, I'm going to bring him back to life. Right. But I'm going to do it. And I'm going to put this part in ink. Brian and John here. Interesting. Yeah. So I want, I want them to see just how powerful mm -hmm. Elijah was and how, how mighty I am. Yes, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to take this man's story that I know so well, of course. I, I mean, God knew this man before he was in the womb. I mean, really let that sink in. You know, sometimes when we read the Bible, we just think a man was buried. He touched Elijah in the tomb. So he came back to life. Just a man. Whatever. All right. Verse 22. Like, no, God knows this man before he was in the womb. Amen. This is this is a whole life that we're talking about here. So we just don't know the backstory. And, you know, that's maybe a question we should ask God when we get to heaven is, hey, I want to. Hey, Jesus, if you have time, tell me the story about the man that came back. If you. Yeah. Let me let me know. Who's this guy who fell upon uh, Elisha's bones? And I think you'd be pleasantly surprised when Jesus says, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you about him. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Just because it's only one sentence in ink, it's a whole life. Well, look what it says. It says, groups of Moabite raiders used to invade the land each spring. Once when some Israelites were burying a man, just out of the... Just out of the blue, it says, they spied a band of these raiders. So they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elisha and fled. So it was an Israelite, for sure, yeah. here. See, once when some Israelites... Yeah. They were burying a man. They just tossed him over. Ah, go, 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 go. They're coming. They're coming. Can you imagine? Let's just call it, this guy's name is, is Mike. They threw Mike in this, they threw Mike in this grave. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting is there. I guess they were, they buried Elisha, and then they went and dug, dug to bury this guy, and they, they hit Elisha's bones. I guess. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I guess this is a burial area. Yeah. I mean, uh, what do you call that? A, uh, um, graveyard. Yeah. Because you know his 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 his, his uh. His resting place is not just wide open, right? They buried him. He was buried. That's what it says. So right. they must have opened it up somehow, digging. In interesting that God does not give us the sight, though. In other places, God says, well, I buried him right. or her here next to, you know, X, Y, and Z. Yeah, with his people, the kings, or the... Yeah, it's interesting fathers. how... God does not give us a location. No, no. Whereas if we re if we if we count the letters from left to right seventeen times, we get the location. Oh, this X. is like no. age and treasure. Oh, uh, you know, so you know what? You want to go down a rabbit hole. There is, John. There is something called in the he in the Hebrew Bible, right? In the in the Torah. The Torah. If you, you they have there's no punctuation there's no numbers, right? There's mm. no there's no ca char there's no chapters, and verse numbers, and no punctuation. So the mm. the letters are, you know, they're in verse form, right? You, you know, they're this written similar to our our writings, but the Hebrews, uh, certain scholars have software out there that they've come up with. Before that, they would count numbering, and they, they'd count letters. So they would say, like, the eighth letter, every eighth letter, or whatever. They would come up, in, in, in and there's something called, it's like, uh, it's these hidden messages in the Bible. Mm. And it's, I, I'm telling you, I'll, 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 I'll send you some videos about it. But the crazy part is, they've come up with all these prophecies that have happened. 
Like all of these people's names that are in the Bible, George Bush, uh, who's uh, Saddam, uh, Bin Laden, Os- Osama, uh, Barack Hussein Obama, the nine eleven. It's crazy. Wow. Like it's called the Bible codes. Yeah, and it's all throughout Scripture, like all throughout the uh, the Old Testament. I think it might be in the New Testament too. But God is a genius. Like he he makes it all. So that reminded me of it. But seriously, Bible codes crazy i gotta that's wild yeah and it's all it's not like it's fake i mean i guess i guess people can fake it but it's a it's a huge concept like a lot of people uh, go through it and and mm-hmm. um anyway bible codes but that's another thing that's a but anyway it's just interesting how how this is a this strange story like all of a sudden just thrown in here you know they dug up elijah by accident and threw this guy on his bones and bam he comes back to life how convenient for this guy Mm-hmm. You imagine his thoughts. Could you imagine what he said? He goes, "Boys, I saw him. I saw him. I saw Elisha. I saw. I saw Moses. I saw Abraham." Yeah, you know, it's interesting. He he probably was spreading the word of God ever since he woke up. Oh, I'm sure. And you know, we just don't know the story here. But I mean, he's like, "Hey, I died. I, I was in Abraham's bosom. I saw everybody. I I saw angels." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know how long he was dead, but it, it, it had to be for a while, because mm-hmm. they had to dig. You know, they had to, he was they had to t- carry him out there. You know, they didn't live next to the uh, graveyard, so it was a good mm-hmm. minute of, 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 of a while. Yeah, amen. Interesting. interesting. Let's pray it out. Um, yep. I'll I'll pray it out here, uh, dear God. Thank you so much for for writing this book for us, uh, me and Brian and Stuart Young. And James McDermott and Brad and Torres, we just really appreciate the word you've given us. Oh, Jesus, thank you so much for, for dying for our sins and dying for us. And we look forward to seeing you uh, soon up in heaven. We just cannot wait. We love being down here with our friends and family. We're so blessed. Everything good in our life is is from you but at the same time we're so so excited to 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 be in heaven that awaits we don't deserve anything so for all that we have that is good is a blessing amen amen god is good good job that was awesome god is good i think you might be on mute brian amen you're right very god i love what you said you said uh we're excited to see you soon. Amen. Mm. We're ain't yeah. He's coming, John, real soon. Sooner than we think. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. Well, gentlemen, everybody, ladies, thank you so much for being on the chat board with us. It's good to be back. Uh Stuart Young saying can't help but to think about John's testimony when hearing this story. Gosh, yeah. I mm-hmm. I wanted to say that, but I didn't want to make it about me. Uh but it it I had the feeling of, you know, me dying, coming back to life and yeah. being able to spread, you know, my testimony and the word of God and, and what I saw and went through. And you know, it's it's an amazing thing. So thank thank you, Stuart Young. I appreciate it. So All right, Brian Nitsch, everybody, let's have a great Tuesday. God is good. Let's dance for the Lord like King David did on his way to his castle. Amen. Can we do that today? We need to dance for the Lord. Lift for the Lord. Go to work for the Lord. Yeah. Everything. Think about it. King David had a whole castle in front of him. He wasn't thinking, I'm going to get there and play some PS5. (laughs) dance exactly all right we'll see you guys tomorrow salute